funny. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not particularly wearing these to be funny. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kamiyama. What is it, Hayashida? So you want to go grab a bite to eat on our way home? I don't. See you around. Hey, hold on a second. How come you've been so cold to me lately? Let me get this straight. Are you calling me cold just because I didn't want to have an after-school snack with you today? I'm just not hungry, that's all. Oh, no. I think you're a much less kind and gentle person than you were when the two of us first met. Hayashida's right. You've changed a lot lately. <sighs> listen up and listen good. Somehow this notion that I'm a quiet and good-natured guy has taken hold at this school, and now I can't seem to do anything without people labeling me as a cold-hearted freak show, even though that's not necessarily the truth. You know, I think you might have a point there. It would be like if someone who was really bad, like Hayashida, suddenly started being nice to people. Then they thought, oh, that Hayashida's a really nice guy. Or maybe he's not so bad after all. People fool themselves like that all the time, you know. I think that's probably why I've seemed so cold to you lately. I see. For example, I'll put my legs on the desk. Now, just for the sake of argument, you put your legs up. Come on, put them up on the desk, just like I did, Hayashida. <clears throat> like this? So, how does this look? We're both doing the same thing, but I'll bet I look like I'm doing something bad. It's true. Only Kamiyama looks like he's doing something really bad. Hayashida looks like he's just kicking back and relaxing. This time, I want you to look at the two of us reading our books. I'll bet it looks like, of the two of us, Hayashida's trying to read a book that he can't possibly understand. He's right. Kamiyama just looks like he's reading to pass the time. In conclusion, your image of a person's behavior patterns has a lot to do with how you perceive their actions. I see. And the more a person's actions differ from their image, the stronger your perception becomes. Taking that into account, here's the next experiment. Experiment. I'll kill you all. Wow, that was that was really scary, Kamiyama. You looked so mean, I almost gave you money. It wasn't that bad. You know why? Because if someone gets angry all the time, it's really no big deal. But when someone usually doesn't get angry, it's scary. Man, this is just a revelation. No. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Hold oh, on, you're telling me there's more? What in the hell's gonna happen next? Hayashida looked like he was trying so hard because he's not a reader. I knew that little tidbit about him, and that's what made my little experiment so successful. However, let us ponder what would happen if we brought in someone more illiterate. Enter our friend the gorilla. Oh. This time, we'll have Gorilla and Hayashida reading together. Now, which one looks like he's trying harder? Which one? Which one's trying harder? My god, Gorilla's making Hayashida look like a genius. Yes. This discussion got a little weird somewhere. Amazing. Hayashida looked well read earlier, but now he's like a genius. If it's this effective, maybe we can start applying this principle to other things. That's what I was gonna say. Now let's move on to the next step. There's more to this? First of all, We'll have Gorilla hold a banana like he usually does. Hmm, that's normal. We see him with a banana all the time. We've established that. But what happens if he holds a microphone? Now, just look at us and tell me which one has more singing ability. Whoa! Oh, incredible! Wow. He looks like a superstar! That's like a magic trick. This is a technique that exploits the dark recesses of the psyche. And now for the last step. This is a test to check your judgment. What? You're gonna do something else? I'm gonna put a sash on, and I'll put another one on Gorilla. And we'll hold our mics again. Then what? Now. Which one of us would you vote for? Oh, we'll vote for Gorilla! No, elect the other guy. You kids aren't old enough to vote. So, as you can see, it's not that I've become cold at all. Mm, no, you've definitely changed. He's right, you used to be a lot more polite. Or maybe it was just that you were quieter. Jeez, you don't understand even after I've explained it all to you! All right, guys, listen up. Maybe I have changed after all, but you can't say with absolute certainty that change is a bad thing. On the contrary, without change, there would be no progress. Yeah, I know. But listen, man, not changing can have its merits, too. For instance, when, well, there are some things that are really comforting because they don't change. You know what I mean, man? Duh! Of course there are also merits to not changing. Stubbornly refusing to alter your behavior is sometimes the best thing one can do in life. I guess what we're talking about is something like asking a once famous comedian how long he's gonna keep using his old, tired material, don't you think? Don't get me wrong, I'm not making fun of that. I completely respect both ways of dealing with change. I do. 
That's kind of a pain. For example, say a high school girl who's usually pretty serious dyes her hair at the end of summer vacation. Yeah, that happens all the time. And usually a bunch of guy students go and get all freaked out about it. And then they'll start whispering to each other about her. Oh, she did this and this with this guy. And that's not good, you know? Well, what are we supposed to do? Ignore it? Then she'd feel invisible, like she was an outsider. But doesn't going through with such an extreme image change imply that she has a certain level of assertiveness? In a sense, she's a challenger. And I, for one, would like to cheer on that plucky bleached blonde from the bottom of my heart. Because it certainly takes a lot of guts to change your image. That's right, and we should be supporting that kind of courage. Yeah! I can't go in there 